The meme of the incorruptible wholeness of the cube draws us on past the disintegrative fragments and sounds of a cycle just closing. In order to see the whole panorama of human history, it is important to study the greatest art halls to find how culture was created. Once again we return to the theme of rock and roll in order to demonstrate universal truths. If we study cultures throughout history, we see that there is always a current of rise and fall, and in between are stages of expansion and degeneration. This is a universal wave model of cultural cyclical processes. And of course, one of the most significant art holes is rock and roll. In viewing the history of rock and roll, we can see the rise and fall and the expansion and degeneration as with any cultural meme. We will use the example of rock and roll as an art form, a memoplex, in order to illustrate the nature of cultural memes, how they are established, and how their novelty peaks and then wears out. When novelty reaches the point of saturation, it becomes a cliché and begins the generative process. When studying cultural memes, it is important to keep in mind the time and world circumstances that they are introduced. For example, we know that rock and roll occurs in the context of the atomic age. In 1945, the first atomic bombs were exploded resulting in the Cold War, and in 1952-53, a hydrogen bomb was developed. This was a fearful time for many people as the governments were testing hydrogen bombs to see how far out in space they could go. The impact of this potential catastrophic world destruction, Ragnarok, was the backdrop of the rise of rock and roll. This is what brought about the burning urgency communicated through the music, arousing Lost Planet Anolfs. The Lost Planet Anolfs consciously or unconsciously tapped specific memories. Was there a world we destroyed before? Where did this happen? Are we doing this again? How are we going to break out of this? Can you see how suddenly the sneering image of Elvis arose to electrify a generation? At the time of the potential of world catastrophe, during the Cold War, the governments created enough bombs to destroy the world ten times over. This took place in a planetary social situation of increasing technospheric regimentation. So we have these two social forces, potential world destruction and increasing technospheric technological technocratic regimentation. This dynamic tension in the mid-1950s created the electronic art form and cultural style of rock and roll. In the dream spell cosmology, the first year of rock and roll was the white lunar wizard year, 1955-56. This means the solar galactic return of the White Lunar Wizard in year 2007-2008 marked 52 years of rock and roll, plus a four-year coda to 2012. Those 52 years can be divided as in any cultural form, where the first half is the passionate phase and the second half the pessimistic phase. The passionate phase is characterized by great bursts of novelty, rapid artistic evolution, and diffusion of that novelty into most parts of the world. In this way, rock and roll was actually a world art form, even though most lyrics were in English. Still, the language and music was used in such a way that dissolved cultural barriers, as the artist communicated with their emotions in a universal language beyond limitations. For this reason, rock and roll spread around the world. It spoke to everybody on the planet that was aware of bombs and the increasing technospheric regimentation. These people were also aware of the deterioration of the biosphere and environment, or as Neil Young put it, Mother Nature on the run in the 1970s. These three factors, the bomb, regimented technology, and the deteriorating environment, created this cycle of rock and roll. The passionate phase of rock and roll ran from 1955 to 1981, a 26-year cycle. The passionate phase saw great creative leaps and bursts of novelty, a genuine cultural revolution, with increasing diffusion to all corners of the planet. At this time, 
new technological development helped disseminate the music and also impacted the expressive possibilities of the music. By 1960, the following technologies were completely in place. Television, AM radio with the top 40, then the 45 RPM records that accommodate and define the standard pop song, and finally the 33 third record. The later became the basis of the concept album. Primitive rock and roll entered the world scene from 1956 to 1963 with rockabilly musicians like Elvis Presley, Jerry Lewis and Buddy Holly, and rhythm and blues artists like Fats Domino and Chuck Berry, who created a whole new sound derived from country and rhythm and blues, but had a new synthesizing effect that spoke universally to all younger people. It was a sound waiting to be born to the first generation of the atomic era. The first stage of transformation of rock and roll began in 1963. The rhythm and blues transformed into the Motown sound that received a huge response beginning in England. It was also in 1963 that the Beatles emerged. The six-year period from 1963 to 1969 was the most dynamic period of innovation of rock and roll. During this period the music evolved from a simple high school rock and roll love song phase to more complex and haunting types of music with more profound themes such as early Pink Floyd, Beatles and Rolling Stones albums. This six year period culminated in 1969 with Woodstock, Jimi Hendrix and the emergence of The Doors. After Woodstock, a new phase of rock and roll entered, a more mature evolving phase. This is the second phase of Pink Floyd and then Led Zeppelin with their heavy metal sound. This phase also saw the emergence of David Bowie and his first hit, Space Oddity. In this phase, new technologies of multiple track recordings became available, allowing more musical experimentation and the sound studios. This was also a time of the opening of the doors of perception, with the widespread use of LSD becoming prominent to the creativity of the formative rock and roll culture. If you look at Elvis Presley in 1956 and then David Bowie in 1973, when he was portraying Ziggy Stardust with the spiders from Mars, you see a great transformation of style. This illustrates the evolution of an art form. Even through the 1970s, there were continuous creative leaps and generational flows of meaning emerging through the music that communicated increasingly complex memes. These memes, activated in the 1970s, affected culture in every possible way, for example, but not limited to the development of disco, psychedelic funk and punk rock, with The Clash, The Ramones, The Sex Pistols, The Dead Kennedys and Patti Smith. This represents the anticipation of the coming of the second or pessimistic stage. The dividing line between the passionate and pessimistic phases came in 1981 with the introduction of MTV or music television. With MTV came the music video, a complex art form that incorporates music with types of visual video fantasies, displaying a wide range of images to create different effects often surrealistic and artistically outlandish. With MTV, rock and roll was incorporated into another medium, creating a type of hybrid form, so that the actual novelty of the music started to diminish, and by the 1990s, rock and roll had become incorporated into the standardized world mind. At this point, rock and roll became the background texture of the technosphere. Wherever you go, whether you are riding your car, waiting in the subway station, shopping at the grocery or department store, in an elevator, in a restaurant, in an office, etc., the background texture is there. Many people listen to music in their Walkmans or iPods while jogging or walking. It was the invention of the Walkman in the 1980s that first allowed people to enter their own private world by listening to anything, anytime. In the modern world, radio has become almost obsolete as people download their favorite music from the internet and then bop around with their iPods. 
This demonstrates the decline of artistic novelty through the increase of innovative gadgetry. The increase of pessimism can be found throughout the 1990s, with the rise of grunge music and hip hop rap, particularly gangster rap. Popular artists like Kurt Cobain, Tupac Shakur, and Notorious B.I.G. were suicided or murdered. There is also the introduction of global fusion, techno pop, and acid house rave music. At this point, rock and roll is absorbed into these forms and innovation declines. There are a few exceptions in the mainstream rock who maintained the original vibration in terms of image and lyrical and emotional impact. By and large, as we reach this point, in the last five years before the closing of the cycle, there is a new kind of across-the-board nihilism. You have the 1950s, 1960s and 1970s that represent the passionate phase, then the 1980s, the 1990s and early 2000s, where there seems to be a profound type of nihilism. There is a pervading feeling that nothing is new, everything has been done, and that we are really at the end of this particular cycle. At this stage, the possibilities of innovation have exhausted themselves. The art form has become a planetary texture inflected into numerous spin-offs or hybrid art forms that are often highly complex, such as electronic forms of rave, trance, hip-hop or avant-garde punk sounds. However, the inspiration of all these new forms is still largely dependent on the mythic figures that laid the foundation in the 1960s and 70s.